August 4th. On this day we celebrate the memory of the seven sleepers of Ephesus, Maximilian, Exacustodian, Iamblicus, Martinian, Dionysius, Antoninus and Constantine. Emperor Decius, having on his way from the west arrived in Ephesus, ordered all the people to gather in the temples and to offer sacrifice to the gods. On the third day of the celebrations, he ordered that all the Christians be arrested. The Jews and pagans greatly aided and abetted the soldiers, dragging all the believers they found into the public square in order to force them to offer sacrifice. Many gave in before the threat of torture, while those who refused to submit were put to death without mercy. In the face of such demonstrations of cruelty, Maximilian, the son of the city's prefect, along with six other men of its most illustrious families who were serving as cadets in the army, were greatly distressed and they wept more for the loss of the apostate souls than for the sufferings of the martyrs. Each time a sacrifice was announced, they would gather in one of the churches to pray. This action did not escape the notice of the pagans who went to denounce them to the emperor. Their eyes still filled with tears, they were taken to the palace in chains. Maximilian spoke for them all when the emperor interrogated them as to the reason for their insubordination, saying, We have one God whose glory fills heaven and earth, to whom we offer the secret sacrifice of our confession of faith and our unceasing prayer. Decius in anger ordered that they be stripped of their belts, the sign of their dignity, but pretending to show them mercy, had them released from their bonds and gave them a few days to reflect upon their situation while he was absent from the city. After having conferred together, the seven young men decided to go and hide in a vast cave to the east of the town, to prepare themselves in solitude and in prayer to appear again before the tyrant. During the days that they spent in this retreat, Iamblichus, the youngest of them, took charge of their supplies and went into the town from time to time for this. As soon as he returned to Ephesus, Decius ordered that the Christian prisoners be brought before him in order to sacrifice to the idols. When they learned of these summons, the young men redoubled their prayers. They expended so much effort that when Iamblichus brought them bread in the evening, they sat down to eat and they immediately fell asleep, overcome with exhaustion. By God's providence, they thus gave their souls in his hands, their prayers still on their lips. Furious at not being able to find the young Christians, Decius had their parents interrogated, and when they revealed their hiding place, he sent men there with orders to block up the entrance to the cave so that the saints should die by suffocation. The officials charged with this task, Theodore and Barbus, who were secretly also Christians, carried out this order most reluctantly, and they engraved the account of the martyrdom of the seven young men on lead tablets which they hid in a chest nearby. About two hundred years later, during, during the reign of Theodosius the Younger, in about 446, a heresy which denied the resurrection of the dead began to tear apart the church. Finding its origin in the teaching of Theodore, this heresy led many souls to perdition, so that the devout emperor Theodosius begged God with tears to reveal the truth. It happened that a certain audacious, the owner of the land where the grave of the seven martyrs was to be found, decided to build an enclosure for his sheep there. In moving the stones, he uncovered the entrance of the cave, and immediately the seven young men came back to life and were as though they had simply gone to sleep the night before, without change or sign of having undergone such a long sleep. Their conversation immediately returned to the persecution and the public sacrifice demanded of them by Decius. 
Maximilian spoke, saying, So, my brothers, let Decius capture us. Let us be brave before our persecutors, and do not let us betray our faith by cowardice. Iamblichus, take this money, and go to the city to buy bread. Buy a little more than usual, for we are really hungry, and take the opportunity to find out what searches the emperor is engaged in to find us. Arriving at the entrance to the city, Iamblichus was first astounded to see the sign of the cross on all the gates of the city. Recognizing neither people nor buildings, he asked himself whether he was dreaming or had arrived in another city. He bought bread at the market, but when he handed over his money, the baker looked attentively at him and asked him if he had found some ancient hoard of treasure, for his money bore the likeness of a past emperor. At his words, Iamblichus began to tremble with fear and wanted to flee, thinking that the man wished to hand him over to the emperor. The stallkeepers, however, kept hold of him and threatened to kill him unless he shared his treasure with them. They tied a rope around his neck and brought him to the Agora. They met the proconsul there, who was on his way to the house of Bishop Stephen. When they informed him of the reason for all the commotion, the official asked Iamblichus where he had found the treasure and where he had hidden it. The young boy replied that he had found nothing, for he had received the money from his parents. When they questioned him about his country and his family, he said, I am from here, if this city is indeed Ephesus. And he gave his parents names. They were both unknown and unusual, and so the magistrate became angry and accused Iamblichus of trying to deceive him, for the coins were more than two hundred years old, which showed clearly that he had found a treasure. Iamblichus fell at his feet and begged him to tell him where the Emperor Decius was to be found. When they replied that the Emperor Decius was long since dead, Iamblichus asked the proconsul to follow him to the cave, so that he might see that he had truly fled with his companions to take refuge from Decius's persecution. The proconsul, accompanied by the bishop and a great crowd, went with him to the cave where they discovered the lead tablets on which were engraved the names of the holy youth. All recognized the truth of the miracle and gave thanks to God. The proconsul and the bishop wrote to the emperor Theodosius, saying that the miraculous manifestation of the seven young men, long since dead, was a clear manifestation of the resurrection of the body. Theodosius hurried to Ephesus to pay a visit to the holy youths and washed their feet with his tears. After having spoken at length of their story to the sovereign and to the bishops who were there present, Maximilian and his companions lay gently down on the ground and slept in very truth the sleep of death. Theodosius ordered that seven gold sarcophagi be made and that the seven young men be honored by great festivities, to which he planned to invite the entire city of Ephesus, both rich and poor. The following night, however, the saints appeared to the emperor and asked him to leave their bodies in the earth of their cave to await the resurrection. Blessed be the Lord, always and all and for the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. O heavenly King, O comforter, the spirit of truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. 
Lord, be gracious unto our sins, Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, the age of ages. Amen. Thy martyrs, O Lord, in their courageous contest for thee, received as the prize the crowns of incorruption and life from thee, our immortal God. For since they possess thy strength, they cast down the tyrants and wholly destroy the demon's strengthless presumption. O Christ God, by their prayer save our souls, since thou art merciful. Come, all ye people, let us chant a hymn to Christ God, who did divide to the sea and guided the people whom he had led forth up from the bondage of Egypt, for he has been glorified. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. Come in faith, let us honor those seven gleaming precious stones, for they blaze upon the church of Christ with a greater light than the seven branch lampstead of the Lord. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. The seven youths, living before in Christ through the mortification of the flesh, sprang up as though they had wondrously slept and not died, confirming the doctrine of the resurrection. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. Jericho fell at the cry of seven trumpets, but now at the seven voice faith of the prize winners, the elation of error is gone down into Hades and is utterly destroyed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O saintly seven years, you have truly received a double crown, since you have ravaged error and the denial of the rising of all, the former before your death, and the latter in your arising. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou hast inaugurated a new kind of birth, O unwedded bride, for the Word, who in the divine Spirit is co-eternal and co-beginning with the Father, receive the body from thee without suffering change or intermingling. Make us steadfast in thee, O Lord, by the tree of slain sin, and plant the fear of thee in the hearts of us who hymn thee. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. O seven unerring stars, flashing with faith, O prize winners, you guided them, they were awash on the sea of error, onto the saving harbor. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. Like the Maccabees in time past, O saints, as you stood dauntless before the tyrant's judgment seat, you exchanged transient glory for warfare, being enlisted with Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Holy Spirit. Worthily were you shown forth as an acceptable sacrifice of prayer unto Christ, O holy use, and as an odor of exceedingly sweet savor, steadfastly proving the foul order of delusion. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The bush upon Sinai prefigured the strangeness of thy childbirth, O virgin, for when thou didst believingly receive the fire of the Godhead in thy womb, Thou wast not burned. They that scorned all things in the world as corrupted, and found the gifts that nothing ever corrupteth, behold, they died, and yet corruption touched them not. Wherefore, after many years, once again they all rose up, Burying all unbelief of malicious revilers. Ye faithful, let us laud the seven youths, with hymns of praise on this day well extolling Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lover of sin, although I am, I implore thee, thou who didst bear the sinless God and Creator, him that doth take away the sins of all the world, have compassion on my soul, full of sin and transgression, Blot out all my many sins, O all honourable Lady, who art forgiveness for those who have sinned, and the salvation and succour of faithful souls. I have heard, O Lord, of thy glorious dispensation, and I have glorified thine unapproachable power, O thou who lovest mankind. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. Let us, Lord, the seven honorable youths, that most sacred company honor with the number seven. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. When the impious and deceived king contrived vain things, the children of Ephesus showed him to be senseless. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. In the faith you truly became all spotless victims and sacrifices unto the Lord of Holy you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Dying in the body of you, and inexpressibly arising again, even before the common resurrection, you are crowned with glory. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. This day, know to intercede continually in our behalf, that we may be delivered from every tribulation. O blessed and immaculate Virgin. O Lord, thou bestower of light and creator of the ages. Guide us in the light of thy commandments, for we know none other God than thee. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. First you died the common death on earth and unawares, then you marvelously rose again, clearly confirming the resurrection of the dead. O Ephesian you, O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. Sacrificed unto God through your true confession of faith as the Lord's lawful athletes, O wise children. You are spared pillories and stripes, and you took the cross. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Since you have mightily overcome the deception of idols and the doctrine of ungodly heresy, O fair famed martyrs, ever keep watch over them that confess the resurrection of the dead. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou, the transcendent in essence, born of a holy mother, art now into natures but one hypostasis, being perfect mortal and perfect God without confusion. Compassed by the abyss of my many sins, I invoke the boundless abyss and unfathom deep of thy compassion, O my Christ. Raise me up out of corruption, O Lord my God. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. Let the pillars equal in number to those of the divine wisdom be acclaimed, even the seven years that with words, us with stones, crush the tyrant's godless decree. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. Watched over by wanted divine providence, you receive the cave as an unlooked-for sepulchre, O saints, wherein you lay dead and uncorrupted for many years. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As partakers of incorruption, O martyrs, you drive away corruption and dead faith, and you intercede with God for those who hope in the resurrection. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Now is woman's nature glad, and now her sorrow ceased, and joy has put forth flower. For Mary has given birth to joy, the Saviour and Lord. Thou who hast made thy saints on earth to be wondrous, even before thy second terrible coming, did show the resurrection to those ignorant, when, O Christ, thy seven youths rose in marvellous fashion, with their bodies incorrupt and their clothes all imperfect. And thou didst move the king to cry aloud, In very truth, lo, the dead shall arise again. The all-wise children did not worship the golden body, but entered into the flame themselves and mocked the gods of the heathen. 
They cried aloud in the midst of the flame, and the angel bedewed them, saying, The prayer of your mouths has already been heard. O saints of God, pray to God for us. The youths became Christ's pure and chosen vessels, whereby heretical teaching is driven far from the church, and orthodoxy brightly shines. For as it came to pass in them, so shall there be the resurrection of every soul and body. O saints of God, intercede on our behalf. As you were truly steadfast in your contest before death, O holy youths, you appeared again living even after death, made mighty with divine glory and devoutly confirming in yourselves the truth of the resurrection. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The resurrection shall be of spirits and tangible bodies together, for said they of great acclaim, even as the soul sprang not forth without the body, to come forth without it into the world. Neither shall the soul be glorified or put to trial without the body. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Mary, in giving birth to God, the Saviour of all, thou became the uprighting of the de despairing, the help of those astray, the hope of the hopeless, and the succor of them that chant. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. To the Lord God, who did descend to the Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, and transform the flames and the burning heat into dew, chant praises and hymns to all ye works of his, and exalt him greatly to ages and all ages. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. The bitter illusion and heresy of the godless that evilly sprouted up, the divine use have now cut out at the root, and they are laden with the fruit of the faith, for by faith they lived and were buried and rose again. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. The chiefs of Ephesians, the saintly seven youths and prize winners, have been shown by faith and divine inspiration to be a staff of the church and kingdom of Christ, we supremely exalt them on to all the ages. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. Appearing as stalwart athletes and equal in number to the planets, the youths removed error from the road of right religion as they cried. Thee do we supremely exalt, O Christ, unto the ages. We bless Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lord. Light and a resurrection of life was marvelously bestowed by God upon the youths in the cave. And when they were risen, they who before had died and now did live, they cried out, Save, O God, them that him thee with faith. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. No man has ever perished that in orthodox manner had the hopes of his faith set upon the O pure Virgin Mother of God except them alone that in envy refuse to worship the image of thy likeness. O thou who from thy virginal loins ineffably lentest a body unto the luminary that was before the sun, even God who has dawned upon us and dwelt among us in the body, O blessed and all pure Theotokos, thee do we magnify. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. The resurrection of the saints has now proved to be a wealth of mysteries and a revelation of divine marvels. For they that long ago died a natural death in the flesh are now risen up and corrupted, arrayed in their clothes like men that slow. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. The saints' cave is a treasury of strengthening and a seal of sure faith, heralding the glory of the resurrection to come, which shall raise up not Lazarus dead for days, but all that have died since time become. O saints of God, intercede in our behalf. The youth, both in number and in faith, are of a certain to the honored eyes of the Church of Christ, who flash more brilliantly than the plummet stone of Zerubbabel. Let us spiritually load the godly spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Striving lawfully, you put on the crown of martyrdom, O seven youths and pillars of the wisdom, of God, and you have proved to be the resurrection of orthodox doctrines as the defenders of the church and the intercessors for them that extol you. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Since the thou didst preserve thy body and soul and defile for God, Christ the King, love thy beauty, O pure one. 
and he showed thee forth as the mother of his incarnation, so accomplishing mine eternal salvation, O supremely glorious Mary. Before the tyrant's judgment seat, he preached with holy boldness that Christ is God of all that is, the Saviour and Creator. For by God's wisdom and foresight, ye died the death of nature, were in a cave for many years. Then transcending all nature, ye rose again, as though out of sleep, and thereby ye stopped up the mouths of all the heretics, O seven youths and martyrs. Wisdom, most holy mother of God, save us. More honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, Thee who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, thee do we magnify. Glory to you, Christ God, O hope. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Holy Father, bless. May Christ, O true God, in the prayers of his holy and all pure mother, with the prayers of St. John the Baptist of the Holy and all praised apostles, with the power and under the protection of the Holy Life giving cross and all the holy bodiless powers of heaven. With the prayers of our fathers among the saints, Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, Sisoes the Great, Brandon the Navigator, Horan of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ron, and Moloch, all the saints of all these islands, protect us of our monastery and our community. With the prayers of the Holy Seven Youths of Ephesus, Maximilian, Exacustodian, Iamblichus, Martinian, Dionysius, John, and Constantine, who rose from the sleep of death. With the prayers of our righteous mother, the martyr Eudosha, the Samaritan, whose holy relics have been recovered today. With the prayers of the holy martyr Thathuel, who having been hanged upon an apple tree, was perfected in martyrdom with the prayers of the Holy Martyr Ea and those with her in Persia, with the prayers of the Holy New Harder Martyr Nicholas, Prozorov, the priest of Petrograd, who was slain by the atheist in 1930, with the prayers of the Holy New Harder Martyr Demetrius, Archbishop of Gdov, who was slain by the atheists in 1938, with the prayers of St. Lugid of Clonfort and St. Sithny and those with them whose memory we also keep this day, with the prayers of the holy ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and he loves mankind. Amen. With the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.